A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and, and the hair on his head white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands and thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the vision during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship will not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round him. Justice and judgment are the foundations of his throne. The Lord, the Lord is, is king, king the, most the most high over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. The Lord, the Lord is, is king, king, the most high over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the most high above all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up a mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothes became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. 
As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. I've had the experience both in actual life and in, in a rather important dream of being able, or probably I should say not being able, to open my eyes fully for the impact of what it is that's happening. You know, and in the dream particularly, it was like there was a, a river and it was a boat launch and I was there and there was this incredible, incredible light that kept me with my eyes tightly shut, even though I knew about the light and I could even feel the light and I wasn't able to open my eyes and the whole long story is probably of interpretation on that dream that we're not going to go there, but the fact is that experience was so intense that I couldn't directly look at it. I can't imagine the, the experience of transfiguration to be anything other than something like that, where Peter and John and James are asleep maybe or maybe just with eyes closed because of the incredible awesomeness of what's going on. Maybe with thunder and lightning too, who knows? You know, what a staggering experience that had to have been. On top of that, to understand that as, as um, well, Father Canto La Mesa in his meditation in Magnificat today talks about how that, the fact that Jesus poised at the very top of the mountain between heaven and earth is a nice example artistically of the truth of Jesus Christ, fully human, fully divine. Fine. But why a mountain anyhow? What's the closest point you can get to the heavens? Okay, it's not an accident that mountains have always been regarded sacredly. Okay, whether it's Mount Olympus with the Greek gods or whatever it happens to be. Now there are only two people, it seems to me, that are lacking in the vision that I might have thought could have been there also besides Moses and Elijah. And that would be Abraham and David. And that would have really completed the set. But what do we have with Moses and Elijah? Yes, traditionally we say that Moses gave the law and Elijah is the greatest of the prophets. And that's fine, but it goes even beyond that. Because these were people who were regarded as not having died, who were promised to return right before the coming of the Messiah. Elijah, as we read in 2 Kings, taken to heaven in the fiery chariot, will come back again, okay? Moses, in Deuteronomy, is said to have died, and no one knows the place where he is buried. And because no one knew the place where he was buried, the rabbinic tradition developed that he, in fact, hadn't died, and that he will come back also. And so we can see John the Baptist in the first chapter of John's Gospel being asked by the priests and the Levites from Jerusalem, Who are you then? When he says, I'm not the Messiah, they ask, Are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? No. The prophet like Moses. Moses come again. Here they've come. It celebrates the reality of Jesus as the Messiah then. And again, that voice that confirms Jesus' ministry, the same voice, the same words heard at his baptism. This is a staggering experience. No wonder they didn't say anything about it, you know? But the experience that we have is not dramatic, and yet the presence of Jesus glorified is every bit as real in the sacrament of the Eucharist that we celebrate. And we can give thanks to God for the promise of Jesus, fully human, fully divine, fully our Savior, fully the Messiah, and ask the Lord to help us to be glorified with him. This is also a promise of our own glory, to be transformed, to be transfigured. Now, tragically, although this transfiguration, this metamorphosis, to use the actual Greek word, is one of glory, there is another transformation or metamorphosis that at least is remembered today with the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, where nuclear fission does transform one element into another. Ironically, it's translated, or rather transformed the, the, uh, the uranium into lead, finally. Lead, of course, was the, the uh, thing that all the alchemists were trying to turn into gold back in the Middle Ages. Works the other way. So we can celebrate God's power we can also lament the way in which you use our power sometimes, but we can say in any event, thanks be to God for Jesus transfigured and the promise of our own transfiguration in him.
Let us stand and pray.